approach them like you have a application for a job you're trying to fill. See, this is the way it was before hookup culture existed. Men were out there as the prize because men are the men are because everything was based on relationship. It wasn't based on hookup culture, and men are the gateways to relationships. Women are the gateways to sex. So men would be men would be the ones that are the gatekeepers because sex is done within the within the framework of marriage. And sex is only going to, you know, as far as the woman's power is concerned, it's taken away from her. When sex is first, women have the power. But when relationship is first, the men have the power. So you got to approach it like the, the way we, because sex is first, we approach it like, hey, I'm trying out to see if I can have sex with you. Right? That's a perspective. That's a new way of thinking things. As opposed to, hey, I'm checking you out to see if you're worthy of a relationship with me. Yo, Elliot. <laughs> Yo, Elliot. I hope things are well. Recently, I've been downloading different dating apps and finally accepted that I'm addicted to women. I haven't fapped in the last 30 days, which has been incredibly motivating, but I find the need to look for a woman. I want to learn how to love myself and not have the neediness to look for women or try to find myself in other women. What can I do to fight these urges? What should I be looking for in a woman nowadays? Also, what's your advice on approaching women in public? I find that recently I've been getting a lot of smiles and stares from women recently, but I fear rejection and fear that I'll be let down when I talk to them. Cool. So your first question, how do I fight these urges? Well, I wouldn't put it in that language. I wouldn't say fight the urges. I would say acknowledge the urges and everything is about perspective. Everything is about how you choose to uh, deal with the urges. The urges are there. Don't fight them. Recognize the urge. And here's what this is this is scientific. This is uh, allegorical. Uh, it's spoken about by Napoleon Hill in his great book, uh, The Science of Getting Rich. Right. Is that it? Something like that. Think and Grow Rich. Um, I've even vaguely experienced it myself in recent weeks. And that is transmutation, sexual transmutation. And there's a value in not releasing your seed. There's a tremendous value in not releasing your seed and you don't want to necessarily fight it. You want to, and I know this is going to sound like physiological and I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole, but you circulate it. And the way you circulate it is when you get that, that straight up hard, that boner that you can't, that you need to do something with, you got to breathe through it. You got to breathe through it. You got to draw that attempt. You draw that energy back up into your body and allow it to circulate or which normally happens when you don't fap, you have like a, you have a certain extra motivation. You go and you do something, you get, you get your mind off it. You go and do something. The worst thing to do is to indulge it and then fight it. And then you're, and then you're in a battle against yourself. It's literally like, you know, the good demon and the bad, the bad demon and the angel on your shoulder. It's literally like, you know, I need to fight this. No, I need to fap. I need to fight a woman. And then you, you know, you, you're fighting against yourself. Recognize it, allow it, breathe through it, and then do something else. Um, I hesitate to recommend it, but there's a book uh, called The Multi-Orgasmic Man, uh, Montak Chia. He writes a lot of books, but there are some exercises in, in his books that they're just breathing exercises that teach you how to circulate your sexual energy so that you're not, you don't have to blow it out as a way to recycle it, right? And you may want to look into that. And, you know, I started thinking about this because prior to uh, contraception, I've been, kind of, I've been kind of wrestling with contraception lately in my mind. And just for transparency's sake, I've, I had a vasectomy. 
and um and I've been kind of like I've been kind of like trying to put myself in the shoes of a man that lived prior to contraception and what he would have to do you know if especially if he recognized which I think people were more privy back in the past before pornography was so uh so omnipresent um and and before you know slut culture because they didn't have um they didn't have uh birth control pills any you know to the degree that we have it now anyway what he would have to do and how he would have to live his life and i don't think i think one of the things i don't know but i'm guessing that they wouldn't allow themselves to get so addicted to sex even married men because you can only have so many children, right? You know, at a certain point, it was like, all right, well, you know, we got five, six, seven, eight kids. Um, there are t probably certain times that they, you do have to have self-control, even with your wife. So I think we denied ourselves more back then. I think we got used to, I think back in the day, men were more, we were stronger because we were denying ourselves more. I think we indulge ourselves too much. There's too much indulgent and we become addicted to the indulgent culture, culture these days because indulgence is so easy. Everybody's on birth control. You, everybody's downloading the apps and sex is just kind of like entertainment. It's gone from being sacred and something that you do to procreate with the woman you love to basically something that's expected and something that's kind of uh, like sport, it's just entertainment, it's just, uh, it really has lost all value except for its uh, its ability to release pressure. It's really all it is at this point. It's like having a, it's like having a big zit that was like, you know, you ever have a big zit and it just hurts? And it's like, I just need to, oh, and then you pop it and you're like, oh. Or it's like sneezing, right? And so what sex has become, basically it's just, it's like taking a shit. And it's just like, I got this pressure that I need to, I need to release. Well, I don't think it. I don't think it was always experienced that way, and I don't think it needs to be experienced that way. So, as far as the urges are concerned, I think I think that we can. I think we can find more resourceful ways to go about it than either suppression or this addiction to pleasure. Um, and I think that men, and I'm just kind of ranting a little bit. I think men in the past kind of lived that way. I don't think I don't think men in the in the 1800s were uh, or were like some of you guys have told me like sitting on a toilet bowl looking at your phone and, and beating off. I just don't think that was available to them. <laughs> I don't think they thought of it, and I know for sure they weren't hookup culture didn't exist because they because it was against the natural law that they couldn't subvert nature because they didn't have birth control pills and abortions back then to the degree that we do now and they they had a moral law i think back then people who had had stronger moral laws they had more character they they believed in the transcendent and so as a result they had they had shame right it's, it's shameful it's shameful to have a baby out of wedlock it used to be a shame to have babies out of wedlock right um now in uh porno culture Everybody beats off, but there was a time when it was like shameful. It was shameful. Like you don't go around telling people that you, you're, you're fapping, right? So I don't think they did it as much. Again, I don't know, I'm just speculating, but if you look at the world we live in and how things are, you could just imagine prior to the technology, birth control pills and porns, how did men live? This is why men got married, so that they could, so we could uh, express our urges in a rightly ordered way with one woman for the reason why we have those urges, which is to co-create, right? To, to bring children into the world. So I've, I've made a couple of videos about what you should be looking for in a woman these days. Um, I'm gonna simply put it this way. You're looking for a wife. That's my opinion. My opinion is don't put your dick in a woman that wouldn't, be your, wouldn't make your wife. That's really what it is. Why hook up? What's the point? Besides scratching an itch, right? Besides taking a shit, what are you? What are we out there doing with one another? What are men and women actually doing out there with one another, rather than masturbating with each other's bodies? Hookup culture is a waste. Dating is a waste. Courting is where it's at. I'm looking for a wife. And now that goes to your next question: 
What is your advice about approaching women in public? Approach them like you have a application for a job you're trying to fill. See, this is the way it was before hookup culture existed. Men were out there as the prize because men are the men are because everything was based on relationship. It wasn't based on hookup culture, and men are the gateways to relationships. Women are the gateways to sex. So men would be men would be the ones that are the gatekeepers because sex is done within the within the framework of marriage and sex is only going to you know as far as the woman's power is concerned it's taken away from her when sex is first women have the power but when relationship is first the men have the power so you got to approach it like the, the way we because sex is first we approach it like hey i'm trying out to see if i can have sex with you Right? That's a perspective. That's a new way of thinking things. As opposed to, hey, I'm checking you out to see if you're worthy of a relationship with me. Your sex? Oh, I can get sex anywhere. Oh, I'm not interested in your sex. In fact, I'm looking for a wife. If all you got is what's between your legs, then you're not special. Women, sex does not make women special because every woman has a vagina. Relationships are unique to the type of man. Relationship, the type of relationship you're going to have with a man is based on that man's value. And that man's value, women aren't going around looking for dick. They're looking for a powerful man, a man with status, a man with money, a man, you say you're six foot three, bro, that's status right there with regard to, regard to women. Because you're a bigger man. That automatically means authority. Women want to be with a man that has authority, that they perceive has an authority. Right. So as a six foot three man, you have the authority to say, I'm vetting you. Hey, just to be honest, I'm looking for a life partner. I'm looking for a wife. And I'm considering giving you a chance to try out. And then you vet that woman, that woman or women. Right. Because because if you're if you're vetting women and you're not having sex with women, there's nothing wrong with having multiples, right? It's when you're when you're having sex with a whole bunch of different women, then it's all clouded because you can't see the woman for who they are. You cannot see a woman for who she is if you're having sex with her because you got on the sex goggles. And she's in control because as you've seen with some of our other men here, the minute she's, well, here's what happens when a woman starts having sex with a man and she knows that he's a weak man. She starts pulling back a little bit to, and she'll do this because she'll shit test you. She'll start pulling back a little bit to see you, how you react because maybe I'm going to take his drug away. It's almost like a drug dealer, how he has power over his, his addict. He might like kind of like just play a game a little bit like, let me see if this motherfucker, how he's going to act if I tell him I ain't got none. I'm dry, bro. Oh, what do you mean? And when you going to get someone, you gonna get, this is how we start acting when a woman becomes dry with us. Meaning like she's shit testing. You see how much you need her sex. You don't need her sex. You do not need her sex. Do not be needy for woman's sex. Make her need your relationship. I'm an up and coming man. I'm a professional man. I'm a man on his path. I'm a righteous man. I got a man with a future. I'm a man with authority. I'm a high status man. I'm a strong man. I'm a grown man. I'm a real man. Not a boy. Not a fuck boy. Right? That you're going to find on these apps. So you got to see yourself from that perspective. You got to see yourself from the perspective as I'm the CEO and I'm looking for an assistant. And, you're, and women are a dime a dozen in that way if you're looking for the wrong thing. If you're looking for pussy, they're a dime a dozen. I'm looking for somebody who's going to be a good helpmate. You're my helpmate. I'm the CEO. This is the perspective that men should have. This whole idea that your wife is your partner or that women are, are you know, I get upset when men say, uh, she's my partner. She ain't your partner. You're the CEO. You're the leader. She's your helpmate. Partner is what homosexuals say. When somebody says homo, when somebody says partner, I automatically think, oh, you must be a homosexual. 
If it's a man and a woman, it's a man and a woman. That's my woman. That's my wife. You see what I'm saying? And a woman wants to say the same thing. And there's a, and the and the association with those words should be concrete. When you when a woman says my man, that's my man, you should think man. Not a flimsy sissy with a penis. Man. Right? That's my man. Not my partner. And when it's your woman, it's the same thing. It's my woman. What do you think about when you hear the word woman? Me? I want somebody soft. I want somebody who's going to follow my lead. Right? Woo man. She's with man. Who's going to be with me. I want somebody who's industrious, meaning I don't have to tell her what to do. She's going to take care of what needs to be done in the role I've hired her for, which is wife and mother. Another one, I wouldn't put my dick in a woman that I wouldn't have babies with. So you're being, you're, you're on trial. You're being vetted. You're in a, uh, you offer an application and you in, are in a interview to see whether or not you're going to be a good mother, right? Is this woman, here's, here's a few things to look for. Is this woman lazy? Laziness. Laziness is going to get you caught every single time. I would say that's right at the top of the list. You should look for laziness. If you get even like the slightest hint of laziness, you're gone. In fact, I'm going to rework my philosophy on this. And I know I said in previous videos that, uh, you know, kindness is at the top. But I said industrious today. And I mean that the, the biggest red flag, I would say the biggest red flag with a woman is if she's lazy. You do not want a lazy woman. My mother used to say this. Laziness is nastiness. A, na a lazy woman is a nasty woman. Is she too lazy to get up and do something, right? Like if you guys, let's say you lay it around with her for the weekend and dishes need to be done, she gonna wait for you to do it or she gonna whine and, and like not wanna do it. If she's not gonna get up, here's another one. And you know, because I come from a traditional family and in my family, when we're done with dinner, the women get up. My mother does this, my wife does this, my sister-in-law does this. The women get up and they take the men's plates. And, and oftentimes, they bring our plates to us. Nine times out of 10, or maybe 75% of the time, Colleen brings me my plate. The other 25% is because we got a lot of people around and you know, so I just, or I just rather do it myself. Does she bring, does she cook, right? A lazy, nasty woman won't be able to, can't even cook. She puts shit in the microwave. She gets stuff from McDonald's. McDonald's and microwave women are not going to make good wives. Does she cook? And is she willing to present? Can, I know this sounds like misogynist, but it's just, it's just what works, right? And it goes both ways. I serve my wife because every dollar I make is hers. This is the way my parents taught me. Every dollar I make is my wife's. I give her everything I have. I serve her, she serves me. Don't you want to, I want a wife that serves me, right? What's wrong with that? How, why is that, why is that misogynistic? You, she cooks, I bring home the money, she cooks up the dinner and serves it. Why, why is that, what's wrong with that? Look for that. I wouldn't deal with any woman that can't do that. That's not willing to serve you. I'm giving you a life. This is what a man does for a woman. A man gives a, a woman her life. Women don't have lives. They will not have a life for the most part. Most women will not have a life without a man. Man makes a life, gives a woman her purpose. She, a woman can't have a life. A man can have a life without a woman. But a woman can't have a life without a man because a woman's purpose is to have babies. Now they can fool themselves in our feminist world into thinking that they're, they're somehow fulfilled because they have a career. But all those women that have these big careers and no children, they're miserable. They're miserable. Uh, the woman who created this, the, store, the, um, the show on HBO, Sex in the City, 
who taught all these, who had all these older women on the show, you know, all these women in like the thirties and forties and stuff who were just sleeping around having sex. And like, you know, they're just, they're just old sluts. She came out recently in an interview and said that she, for, she regrets not having children and not having a family now that she's old, but she, her work, she already, she already, let the cat out the bag. She already screwed up because now she's also guilty. She says for putting out these TV shows that teach towards a whole generation of women that it's okay to be an old slut. They have no lives. These women have no lives because they have no families. You follow? So give a woman a life. Think about it that way. When you go out there, you who you looking around these women. And you're asking yourself, which one of you deserve to get a life? Because I'm going to provide one, right? I'm going to provide a life for you, right? And I want to provide a life for women. Like I said before, I want to give my wife everything. I find the right woman. Uh, uh, Stephen Arneo, uh, in, his, in his book about women, I forget the name of it. He, said, he calls it feminine luxury. Feminine luxury. I want to give my wife all the luxury that she can have as a woman. I let, I want my woman to, my, now that the kids are homeschool, my woman sleeps late. My woman sleeps late. Here, let me tell you, yeah, the oracle. Let me tell you how oppressed my wife is. Let me tell you how oppressed my wife is, who cooks and cleans and slaves over the slaves slaves over the stove <laughs> and serves me my dinner and takes care of the kids. Let me tell you how oppressed she is. She sleeps as late as she wants. She goes and gets massages. She works out in the gym. She goes and she gets private tennis lessons. Why? Because she's a woman. She gets true female luxury. Because she plays her role, knows her parts. And it's the same thing with you and me. So that's it, man. A little bit of a rant on that. Um, that's my advice on approaching women. Don't try to trick women. Don't try to trick them into like, uh, uh, you know, fancy words and fancy ways of being. Check out this kid Darius on YouTube. I think he's got some of the best dating advice um, on YouTube. Darius is a black kid who just, it, all his advice is legit. There's some guys that give dating advice and I'm like, oh, they're corny and they're not, and they're blue pill. This kid is right. And he gives great advice because he says exactly what I'm telling you right here, which is you get a life. You get a life, you provide a life, and you offer a woman a life. And she and both of you know your role and play your part. And that's that. That's the way you got to look at it when you're approaching a woman. You're not begging for their sex. You're not, men don't beg for relationships. Women beg for relationships. Women beg for relationships. Women have to, women have to show themselves worthy to you to be in a relationship. Otherwise, she's a waste, Use, useless woman. All right, dude, so that's it, done. Got it, Lyndon. All right. Well, I'm gonna cut it off there. <laughs> it's already 3.30, I gotta start packing and get ready to meet up with you guys later on tonight. To tomorrow, we're gonna be shooting guns, lifting stones. It's cool. Hey, if you missed out on this King gathering, don't worry. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more. And uh, I'll let you guys know about it. I love meeting up with you guys. You guys are my crew. And we're going to do it. We're going to do it up. We'll do it big. Hopefully, we'll get some good videos. I'll come back and I'll tell you guys how it went. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll, some of the guys will show up and we'll talk and let you guys know about it. Um, but that's it. Want to get going? Uh, no 7 p.m. class tonight, just so you guys are aware. Um, but we'll be back next Thursday. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here. And I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, and you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way, 
in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. And me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.